Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yes? Okay. So uh, the conference is coming to an end. I hope you liked it. Um, who in the room is interested in uh, metering? Metering what the applications are doing, what services they use? Good. Okay. <laughs> That's good, because this is what the talk is going to be about. So um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of um, the Abacus project. So the Abacus project is part of the, the Cloud Foundry uh, incubator. It's just half an hour, so we're not going to go into a lot of details, but I hope I'm going to give you enough pointers so that you can go and explore the project later at the end of the, 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 the presentation and maybe contribute to it. Um, so I'll briefly go through what the project is about and what it's not. Um, examples of uh, how you can use it. Uh, we'll go through the architecture. I'll give you a brief overview of the architecture. Um, the APIs that you can use to submit usage to us, retrieve usage reports. We'll talk a little bit about the team and the development process that we're following in the project. The status, we just um, uh, released a new version of Abacus today. I was kind of busy in the last few hours. <laughs> Um, and then we'll talk about how you can uh, contribute to the project, and then at the end of the presentation, there's a bunch of pointers for you to do your homework at the end of the conference. So what is Abacus, and what are its main uh, design points? So it's basically a pipeline of services, we call them microservices these days, that will process your usage data. So what is usage data? Well, you know, if you're using Cloud Foundry, you're running applications, these applications are running in multiple instances. They use memory, right? So maybe at some point you want to know how much memory your applications are using, right? So that's part of the data that we collect, and then we turn that data into um, aggregated usage, and then we multiply that aggregated usage by all the quantities that we collect by price. That gives you a cost, and then that gives you a way to charge your customers or your teams, your departments, depending on your use case. Um, in order to, to, to support this, we, we need all the, all the metering and the, the aggregation functions to be customizable. You know, you don't meter a database like an object storage service or an application or an SMS service, for example, right? Um, so you're going to have to be able to define your own metrics, um, how you um, aggregate these metrics into something that makes sense for the users, right? Um, the usage is um, typically submitted by the, the service providers. So if I provide a database service, I know exactly what applications are doing with my database, how many API calls, how many databases they use, how much uh, uh, space they use in these databases. So I, I have all that information. I need to submit it to Abacus so that Abacus can actually uh, make, sense of the, make sense of the usage. You can do that anytime. Um, so I, in addition to the Abacus project, I also work on Bluemix at IBM. And um, um, we see service providers submit data every minute or every 15 minutes or every hour. You know, we have to accommodate all these different requirements. Um, so we made Abacus flexible enough to not impose too many constraints on the service providers. So service providers submit usage to us, and then we, we process that usage through our pipeline. And at the end of the pipeline, you see rated usage. So that's basically the cost for that usage aggregated along different dimensions. So for example, you may want to see usage at the organization level or at the application level, the space level. Um, maybe you're interested in usage for a specific application or uh, just a specific type of service, just the database or just the caching or just that other notification service that you have, right? So we, we provide a, a way for you to get um, all these reports along all these different dimensions in a flexible way. Um, so I should note here that these usage reports are typically the input to billing. We, we're not doing billing in Abacus. We're not doing payments. We're not... Um, uh, uh, issuing an invoice or anything like this, which is providing you with the data that you can use to build your customers. Right. 
So we've, uh, we've looked at some, uh, you know, we've looked at what's going on out there on the, on the market, some alternatives for, for, for this, and we actually couldn't find any. So that was kind of the reason for building our own initially in, in, uh, in Bluemix. We couldn't find a comprehensive solution, open source, well integrated with CF. So we, um, we built Abacus for that. So like I kind of alluded to in the, in the previous slide, we're not billing or charging customers. If you want to do that, you need an external billing service. That's what we have at IBM. I believe other people who use Abacus are doing that too. They have a billing system and they're feeding that billing system with all the usage data computed um, by Abacus. The other thing that we, we try to not do was, to, try, was to, to make all service brokers common, right? We, like I said before, um, you know, metering a database or an SMS sending service is very different. You know, the measures, the metrics, the formulas that you'll want to use to, to compute the usage are going to be different. You can't really make everybody fit into one kind of um, uh, common pattern. So that, that's the reason why we needed Abacus to be very, very um, uh, flexible. Uh, where is Abacus used today? Well, the code is initially coming from uh, Bluemix, right? So we initially developed uh, the metering and rating system for Bluemix internally at IBM. Um, and, um, and then we, we took a cut of that uh, code base and we thought about open sourcing it. Uh, there were multiple reasons for that. We wanted to contribute that back to um, the Cloud Foundry Foundation because there, there was nothing to do that at the time. Um, also, we wanted to make sure that the APIs that uh, service providers can use to submit usage and um, you know, people who are interested in seeing the usage can use to, to get reports would be open to, to help the ecosystem of service providers all get on board uh, a common uh, uh, metering platform. Um, right now, we're using um, Abacus in all the new instances of, uh, of Bluemix, you know, all the new versions of Bluemix that we have, in particular Bluemix dedicated, right? So we have a, an offer for customers who want to run in their own uh, um, slice of uh, soft layer environment, isolated from, from the others. So we're using um, Abacus there. If you use Bluemix dedicated, you will recognize some of the APIs that we implement in the open source project. Bluemix local also, you know, if you want to install Bluemix um, on, um, on, uh, in your own data center, um, Abacus is there in the middle of, um, uh, of that installation. And with respect to Bluemix public at the moment, we are actually running both engines. The old one that we had like last year and Abacus at the same time, and we're feeding the usage into, into both. And we're comparing the numbers, <laughs> and we're going to do that for. Um, we're going to continue to do that for a little bit of time before we switch everything completely over to Abacus. You know, it's like trying to change the carpet in a big uh, ballroom where people are dancing, right? It's kind of difficult to change one of the engines in the middle of your cloud um, as you have so many customers already on board. Um, SAP has been very um, active and contributed a lot to, to the project right from the beginning. They've implemented, for example, all, all the app um, um, uh, usage uh, metering, you know, all the runtime uh, metering. So that was a really good, good contribution. Um, uh, recently, they've, uh, I think the previous presentation was about concourse. So recently, SAP contributed um, a whole uh, con concourse pipeline for Abacus, which is really good too. And um, I'm sure that if you go to the booth, I don't know if the booths are still open now, but since the conference is coming to an end, but um, if you go to the booth and, and ask them about SAP HANA, they will tell you that they are um, using Abacus too, right? Um, if you go to the GitHub project, you will see that a number of people have started the project and asked questions, open issues, uh, made um, some contributions, you know, pull requests to the project. So we can see that other companies are actually kicking the tires with Abacus or using it in, almost like in production also. So a quick overview of the architecture. Like I said before, um, it's a data processing pipeline, right? Uh, made of a bunch of microservices stitched together uh, using uh, HTTP-based APIs, you know, REST APIs. So typically people, service providers or runtime providers, 
post usage events to us. So that's the left of the, of the chart. The first thing we do is that we try to make sense of that usage data, right? We try to see, okay, is it coming from a service provider that we know about? Is it a kind of um, a resource or service that we know about? What additional information or configuration can we collect about, uh, about that usage? What metering and rating and pricing plans should we use? So we collect all that information in that entry point into the pipeline called the, the usage event collector. Right? Once we have all that information and can make sense of that usage, we apply the metering formulas that have been defined by the people who want to use Abacus, the service providers or the runtime providers. They have to give us the metering formulas that they want us to apply to the usage. So that's the meter service. The meter service is going to turn a bunch of uh, measures. For example, for an application, we have two obvious measures, you know, the number of instances and uh, the memory allocated to each instance in two metrics, you know gigabyte, total number of gigabytes for uh, your application. That's the metric that you want to use maybe um, to um, charge your customers on your particular platform, right? For a database, you could say, well, I have store, I have the space, I have the number of API calls, maybe the number of databases. So the, these are gonna be the in incoming measures and you turn them uh, into metrics using whatever formulas you want to use to configure Abacus, right? So that's the, the output of that step is what we call metered usage, right? That's usage, you look at this usage and it's a bunch of metrics. You, you're not interested in the, the raw measure, the, the, the raw measures anymore, right? Then we get into a very interesting part of the pipeline, which is uh, the step where we need to accumulate usage over time, right? So typically at the end of the month, you want to know how much you've consumed for the month. But maybe you also want to know how much you've consumed the last hour or the last minute or the last week or the last day. Um, or maybe you know the last 30 minutes. So the last 30 minutes doesn't necessarily match with the hour, right? Um, so that's a, that's a pretty interesting part of the, of the pipeline. There's all kinds of issues there that you have to, to resolve if you want to make this work, right? Service providers will send you usage out of sequence. Um, they will send you usage a bit too late, <laughs> or they will send you incorrect usage and then they want to send a correction, right? So how do you make sense of that as time passes, right? How do you accumulate usage into all the time windows that I just talked about, right? So that's, a, that's an interesting part of the project. If you guys are interested in contributing to it, you know, there's a, quite a bit of computer science here. It's not very different from what companies like Twitter or Facebook or Google, for example, have to do with their, the da all the data that goes to their social networks. You know, if you want to, to place the right ads, you need to know how many clicks went to this set of page in the last 10 minutes, for example, right? So, that's, that's, and so that means you need to aggregate data into a time window, potentially a rolling window. Some of the data may come out of sync, delayed. So they, these are all kinds of the same issues that you see all over in the Bay Area here in the Valley, right? Many people are working on these tough problems. And these problems are pretty tough when you have a lot of data, right? So on Bluemix, for example, we have, I think, more than 200 or something like this uh, service providers, and they send us a lot of data. So that accumulates a lot into these little, little databases that I have on the, on the, on the slide here. And, and the other thing is that, you know, you can miss page clicks, but usage data, you don't want to miss it because it's about money, right? So. <laughs> Uh, you need to charge off that data at some point, so it better work well. Right? Once we've gone through that tough step, um, we're ready to aggregate um, uh, usage along the different dimensions that I mentioned before, space, uh, org, application, collection of orgs, because typically you know, a team is, is going to use different orgs, right? Um, resource types because the service provider is interested in only the usage for the service that he provides, not necessarily the, the other one, right? So there's all kinds of different dimensions here uh, that we use to aggregate the, the data and we need to do this in a kind of a space efficient um, way. I'm not going to talk about uh, the volume of data that my team has to handle on Bluemix, but this is a lot of data and we better store it in an efficient way to not blow up all the databases. So once we've aggregated all that data, um, we provide a, a set of reporting APIs, flexible reporting APIs that you can use to, to get uh, data um, out, of, uh, out of the databases, reports along all these different dimensions. Um, 
let's dive into a bit more of the details of, of the architecture. This slide really shows what you need to do, what you want to do if you're going to integrate Abacus into, into your platform, right? And it shows what's not in Abacus, what you have to do around it. Um, so first of all, you need to work with your service providers so that to, to have them implement the, the Abacus APIs to post usage to us. Um, we do all the work, thanks to all the, the, the SAP contributions, um, to do that for you for app usage, right? Because this is really internal to the Cloud Foundry platform and we are part of the Cloud Foundry Foundation, so we thought we really have to do this. We collect all the, all the, the app usage from the CF app usage even databases, right? And we turn them into something that Abacus understands. You might want to meter other things, you know, outside of Cloud Foundry, for example, if you have um, containers, if you have VMs, if you have the, um, you know, other types of resources like bandwidth, for example, at IBM we have this with SoftLayer, right? Because we also offer infrastructure in addition to the platform. So Alexis is not really tied to metering just things from Cloud Foundry. You can feed it with whatever you want. Yesterday I was actually talking with somebody who does some IoT work, and he was like, oh, I get a lot of data from all my sensors, I could actually feed that into Abacus. So that's another use case, you know, if you're interested in doing that. Hmm. Hmm? <laughs> um, so the other thing you need to do is, is provide all the configuration that's actually making Abacus um, uh, flexible. Um, provide the metering plans, the rating plans, the pricing plans that Abacus is going to use to do something with, uh, significant with, you, with your usage, right? Um, so you do that by implementing a set of uh, REST APIs that will call, so you're not calling us with the data, we call you to ask you, for example, hey, I got that usage uh, document, it's for resource ID 1234, service ID 1234, what is the metering plan for this, right? And you just give us back the metering plan and that, that's what we're gonna use. Right? And that metering plan is going to say, here are the metrics that I want out of uh, the metering step, and here are the math formulas that you need to, uh, that Abacus needs to apply to that usage to produce these metrics. Right? On the other side of the pipeline, well, you want to be able to consume all that uh, metered um, and rated usage. Um, so you'll typically plug in a billing system, analytics, things like this, right? So. Um, at IBM, for example, we plug in billing and we also have a lot of analytics. I work on these analytics too that consume um, all the, the, the rated usage and um, try to make sense of, of it. Uh, the technology, um, it's not written in Go. <laughs> I get that question a lot. <laughs> it's written in Node.js. We've done a lot of work on Node in the last, um, the last few years in, in my team, so it kind of came, you know, naturally to Node.js, and Node also gave us a very flexible environment. You know, this is really about business logic, right? You want to be able to tweak how um, um, usage is metered and rated without having to not go into too much system programming, right? And JavaScript is kind of good at that in a way, right? Uh, Node is also pretty good at handling high volumes and a lot of connections, you know, when service providers send us data, sometimes they send us one document at a time, sometimes, sometimes they send them by batch of, batches of, of like 500, sometimes they open like way too many connections, so we have to handle that, right? So Node is pretty good at that. Uh, it's lightweight, I like light, lightweight stuff, so Node was, was a good choice for, for me. Um, the development version of uh, Abacus is really self-contained and doesn't even require like a heavy database or something like this. Typically in production we use CouchDB and thanks to um, the guys from SAP who ported uh, Abacus to MongoDB, you can also use MongoDB, I think they use MongoDB. Um, but you know, to play around with a project or even to run most of the unit tests and uh, kind of the functional and integration test. We don't use CouchDB, we use PouchDB. PouchDB is a small in-memory version of uh, CouchDB, and what's nice really about it is that it doesn't require any configuration, and you can play with it for a while, mess up all the usage data in your database, you stop the server, and it's all fresh, right? It's, um, it's, it's empty. We use JSON for um, all the data representation. 
um, when you want to deploy this to production, while well, you deploy to, um, to CF, we run these node applications as CF apps, so we push them all to, um, to CF. Um, and again, you can connect these apps to either CouchDB or MongoDB uh, for your production environment. So we don't have a lot of time, so I'm not gonna do like a full demo. I just wanna give you a glimpse of what, what, how you can play with it, right? And I'm hoping that some of you guys will do this later. Um, so I'm gonna switch to my command prompt here. I'm kind of a command line kind of guy. Um, so typically, you know, if you want to get started with the project, that's what I want you to get out with, right? You clone, right? Git clone from GitHub, right? Then um, you'll follow um, the steps on our readme, which are really, really simple to get started. So you get into the directory where you've, you've flown the project and you do npm run build. On my laptop, that takes about a minute and 10 seconds. So that's kind of lightweight, okay? And then if you want to run the test, you do npm test. Um, that takes um, about a minute too. But I, what I want to show you here is how you can actually play with, with it um, uh, locally without even deploying it to CF, right? These are just node applications. They run on my laptop as, you know, uh, uh, processes uh, uh, listening to port numbers on my machine. So if I just do npm start, so this is all in the readme on the home page of the project, that's it, Abacus is started, right? And you will recognize here, if I do a PS, um, the, what I talked about, you know, in the, in the architecture, so you can see here the collector, um, application, the meter application, the accumulator application, the aggregator. Uh, we have a, a bunch of other things around these applications to stub out, you know, simulate a real CF env environment. For example, we have an auth server. It's a little node application that simulates UAA, right, because I don't have CF running here, right? Um, we have this uh, pouch server, so it's the little uh, database that I was talking about, right? which is going to contain all the metering data. Right? Uh, the reporting service here, right? So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty lightweight, easy to start, easy to run. And then if you want to run the demo, you just do npm run demo. And that demo is pretty simple, it doesn't do a lot, but it actually exercises the whole pipeline. So what it does is that it submits uh, three, I believe it's three, uh, usage documents that represent usage for a fictitious service. Think about a fictitious um, object, to object storage service, right? Which um, supports the fun concept of lightweight API calls and heavyweight API calls, right? And, um, and also understands the concept of um, um, space, you know, size of your object. So here we submitted um, three uh, usage documents. And uh, once um, the usage has gone through the pipeline, we, we give you the, um, a report with um, all the usage. So I actually just spent $46 uh, dollars with uh, three, uh, three usage docs. So that's a very expensive API. <laughs> that demo API is very expensive. Um, so I'm not gonna go into all the details of that JSON thing, but you can see here that we have um, quantities and costs and charges and summary of, the, of your usage along different dimensions, right? I have the aggregated usage for just for storage um, along the, the plan dimension. So I can see here what plans were used to actually meter this. Um, I think at the bottom here I have uh, the aggregated usage per resource instance somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere here. Um, and this is the usage for um, a fictitious um, um, CF organization, right? So there's documentation for the APIs that you can use um, to um, submit usage and get the reports. So it's all documented on the, on, the, on the Abacus website. You have examples, you have JSON schemas, description of what you do, you know, the post and the get that, that you're supposed to do. So the other thing I wanted to show you is that this also runs, obviously, um, on CF. And here, um, I just did, uh, just before the, the presentation, uh, a CF apps to get the list of apps deployed on another, my account in the CF Abacus space. So that's the, 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 the Bluemix account that I use to, 
to, to test our builds, right? Each time we commit something, um, that kicks uh, Travis build, and uh, these applications are pushed to my account, and then we run integration and performance tests there too, okay? And you will see here, if you look at the, this, this column, you will see that I'm running multiple instances of some of these applications, right, to, to test the, the, the capacity uh, when we run a performance test. So, like I said before, Abacus is flexible. You provide um, um, configuration for your metering plans, your rating plans. You do that using APIs, so you post JSON documents that describe that. I'm not gonna go into the details of these JSON documents. I'm hoping that you guys go to the project after the, after the presentation. But the process for a service provider is typically, you get on board CF, you get your security set up, you get your security token to be able to talk to the Abacus APIs, and then you submit your usage metering plans, and then you submit your usage. Right? Um, so this slide shows an example of a document representing usage for the same fictitious um, object um, storage service, right? Like 10 gigabytes and 10 API calls. It's pretty easy to, um, to figure out what that does. Um, if you want to use the rating part of Abacus, you want to configure the pricing for the resources that you're gonna charge for, right? So you can do that also by uh, posting to us uh, pricing plans which allow you to define different types of pricing and even do that on a, count, on a country basis. For example, in Bluemix, we needed that because we run in many different countries. Uh, once the usage have gone through uh, the pipeline, you want to get a report, and that slide shows um, the type of report that you can get. So that's basically what I was showing you uh, in the demo. Now let's talk about the team. So a fun fact about the team, that slide shows our GitHub profiles. You can see that a number of us do stuff outside of work. So there's biking going on, there's skiing going on. The, the guy on the right does um, precision uh, shooting and Raj looks like he just climbed to the top of the world. He's here, so he's laughing now. <laughs> um, so we're actively looking for tennis players, soccer players, surfers, right? But if you want to get on the team, you can also submit pull requests, right? So that's another way to, to get on the team. Um, if you're going to submit your pull request, you don't necessarily have to pair program with us, especially if you don't know us, you know, ahead of time. Um, we are using a distributed commit, commit process. The team is pretty distributed around the world and in different time zones. And um, uh, Hiesto, for example, is in Bulgaria. Um, so Hiesto works for a, for SAP and, and you know, we managed to talk like about an hour or two, um, yeah, uh, you know, d during the day, but obviously we have, to, we have to be distributed, right? And um, at IBM I also do other things in addition to Abacus, so sometimes my time is a little hectic, so it'd be difficult to pair program with me. <laughs> um, so if you look at the team, it's pretty balanced. We have um, some engineers from, from IBM, Max here in the room is the PM, and, um, I'm JS Delfino, and um, where is uh, Kevin? Kevin is here, right? Um, we have Hiesto and Georgie, and I think we have somebody else from SAP who started to contribute uh, recently in the room here. <laughs> so she's, she's here. We have some uh, independent uh, contributors too, so it, it's pretty balanced, right? And, um, the reality is that, you know, if you're interested in the project, want to get on board, submit a bunch of pull requests, and we'll get together and we'll vote you into the project as a committer, right? So we're really open to contributions from anybody who wants to, to come on board. Obviously, we're on GitHub. You can submit GitHub issues if you have new ideas or run into uh, problems. We also have our own um, um, tracker, right? So you can go to the GitHub project or the tracker to see what's going on. Recent updates, uh, we just released uh, version 005 today. I thought it'd be a good idea to have a release today so that you guys who don't necessarily want to get to the bleeding edge of the head of master can actually get a, a more stable release. I should admit that the release is actually the head of master as of now, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> because we just got the, the release. Um, these slides are actually 
um, on GitHub too. Uh, you can get to them from the, the home page of the project. So I'm not going to go into all the recent updates. I want you guys to download the release, and you will see actually that list in the, in the release notes. Right? We did interesting things uh, recently. Uh, you know, since we're using this in production at IBM, we needed more flexible um, metering and rating plan to accommodate some of our requirements. Um, SAP needed to have Ab Abacus run on MongoDB, so they did a lot of work, good work in that space. We ran into interesting situations with the service providers not behaving nicely and submitting a lot of usage out of sequence, so we had to, um, to improve our handling of that. We got contributions of a um, nice uh, concourse uh, pipeline from the SAP guys um, just um, a few week, days ago, actually. Um, so there's a lot going on um, in, the, in the project. In the near term, we're, gonna, we're going to do um, a few more interesting things. Um, since we need to run this in a multi-data center, multi-region environment, uh, you know, to accommodate for that, we'll um, need um, some level of queuing in the Abacus pipeline. Initially, we were not so sure about that because we thought we can run um, Ab um, one Abacus pipeline per data center and then use something else to flow the data between data centers. But recently, some people have asked us to actually split the pipeline in, in two and have part of the pipeline in one data, data center and the, the, the rest of the pipeline, more of the aggregation logic in a, in a different one. So we're going to introduce some queuing here. Um, a in, very interesting space, if people are, you know, machine learning and, and AI are all the rage these days, right? And uh, recently, we got some, uh, some uh, interesting requirements from some people at IBM. You know, they, were, they were saying, well, what if a service provider forgets to send us usage? Or what if a service provider actually starts to behave not so, not so well and sends incorrect usage? Could we actually detect this ahead of time? Or, you know, as it happens, if they're not sending us usage, you know, if we don't do anything, we don't know about it, right? So how could we detect that, right? Um, so we're starting to kind of explore uh, that space to see if we could predict, you know, some of these situations instead of having the pagers on the team here to actually handle this after the fact. <laughs> um, so we're, we're also doing interesting work in uh, handling uh, fa failed events, right? So, for example, somebody misconfigured the metering plan and the usage went through the pipeline. How do you recover from that? How do you replay that usage after the fact? How do you help the team that's actually operating the pipeline? Uh, more longer term, actually the first item, I'm not sure if it's going to be longer term or more near term. I know that the SAP team is uh, in India, I believe, is, is working on uh, some, new, some uh, new UI, some UI for Abacus, so I'm really excited about that. Right? And um, I, um, we also had discussions about offering Abacus as a service, another interesting contribution, I think, from, from SAP, since, you know, most of the people who deploy stuff to the cloud are also providing services to their customers, and they might need some metering engine for that kind of service, right? So that's an interesting project. Notifications is something we've been talking about for a long time. Um, I think we're getting a bit over time. As usual, I talk too much, so sorry. But it's the end of the conference, so you guys have a lot more time now. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop um, really soon. How can you contribute? You know, I'm not going to go into really these slides, but um, you know, if you are an integrator of Cloud Foundry, you may want to integrate Abacus because that's going to give you a way to meter usage on your platform and charge your customers and make money and be happy. Right? Um, if you are a service developer, you want to get on board that platform. Right? You want to learn the APIs and be able to submit your usage because this is how you're going to charge for your service. Right? Um, if you just want to have fun and write code, well, this is fun code. Right? Metering, rating, billing doesn't sound so fun initially, but believe me, there are some really tough computer science problems here. Right? And there's volume, big data, lots of data. So that makes it for uh, an interesting project. Right? Um, if you just want to write documentation, we like that too, because usually the documentation lags a little bit behind. My theory is that you know, if the documentation is too good, we'll get more users, maybe less contributors. I, I want people to get into the code. So sometimes it's actually not so bad to not have too good documentation, because people then read the code, and if they like it, maybe they'll contribute to the project. That's what I would like to see. Okay. 
So that's about it. Thank you for uh, uh, listening. Sorry about the overtime. There are a bunch of uh, uh, links to the resources that um, you know will give you more information about the project. Uh, but you know, it's pretty simple. If you just Google Google CF Abacus, you'll get to the homepage, and then you'll get the same thing. Okay. And finally, if you want to talk with us, we are usually on Slack or IRC or Gitter. There are some little labels at the top of the homepage of the project if you want to join us and chat. Okay? Thank you very much. <laughs>